What's up everybody, this is Master EN Gamer. The latest Overwatch content creator experimental patch has been out for a collective total of a few days at this point, and now that I've gotten a chance to actually play around with most of the changed heroes and test out the different roles and how they've actually been tuned in this patch, I wanted to make a video discussing how exactly these changes end up feeling for us as the player, and whether there are any changes here that maybe at some point later down the line could actually work in the actual game. I will quickly note though that at the time of me recording this video there haven't been any follow-up changes to this experimental card yet. I know there's been some talk about possibly tweaking some of the changes in the experimental card and maybe this coming week we'll end up seeing some of those end up going through. But for now all my thoughts in this video are based off of gameplay from having played the original version of this experimental card which who knows might be completely different by the time you're actually watching this video. Anyways getting on to these changes let's start off with the tank hero who by far have gotten the most controversial set of changes easily with their 50% damage reduction across the board. And I'll be honest, I really can't refute this at all. These changes just feel awful. Dealing only half damage with all your weapons, abilities, and ultimates just make the tanks feel bad. Like, maybe playing these heroes in this state wouldn't feel as bad if they had just always had this lower damage amount and was just the normal thing we were used to, but going from the full damage they've always had previously to this 50% damage reduction, it just feels awful. They just feel weaker, it feels like they just can't achieve the same things they used to, and when it comes to an aspect of the hero that's as prevalent as the amount of damage they deal, nerfing that so drastically just feels terrible. So yeah, I honestly have to agree with the masses on this one, these tank changes do not feel good to play with. However, I will mention that I at least appreciate the direction that was seemingly intended to be taken with these changes, specifically when you consider the buff to the tank's sustainability with all the extra added armor most of them ended up getting. I will say that the idea of nerfing tank damage and boosting their survivability is an interesting direction to take the entire tank role, and is certainly something that I've seen brought up time and time again in discussions about how to tweak different heroes over the years, so in a way I'm actually sort of glad the tank heroes were changed in this way purely for this experimental card, because at long last we get to see what tanks look like if they're more focused on just absorbing damage without dealing much damage themselves. Simply from a conceptual standpoint, it is an interesting direction to take these heroes, and even if the results pretty quickly ended up speaking for themselves, I appreciate that this sort of thing was even experimented with to begin with. Maybe it didn't end up working out, but hey, that's the point of an experiment. You can just try something interesting, see how it feels, and in this case, feels awful, so we're never going to see these sorts of changes go to the main game modes. Before I move on to the damage roll though, there are a couple tank heroes in particular I just feel like highlighting specifically. The first being D.Va, whose main buff was the fact that she can quite literally fly indefinitely now with the reduced booster cooldown and the ability to just slow fall while in the air, which admittedly isn't the best direction to take D.Va as a hero, but is an interesting change specifically because it's giving me heavy overlord vibes. Now as a reminder, all these changes were suggested by content creators in the community, so this 100% percent isn't Blizzard trying to discreetly experiment with some sort of overlord flying mechanic, I'll just say that outright now, but it was fun to get to play D.Va in this way where she's able to just essentially hover at the top of the map and shoot down at people, which is a very different play style from what we've typically seen tank heroes get to do. Heroes like Farah and Echo of course can already do that, but having a big tank hero, specifically a mecha squad hero, I don't know, that just, that just felt good to me. There is something fun about that in a way that you know, maybe eventually we'll end up seeing a hero who's properly capable of doing that and has their own kit and abilities that specifically cater to that mechanic, but I just thought it was an interesting thing to point out and one which I certainly had fun playing around with. And the other main tank hero I'd like to touch on is Sigma, who of course got a number of additional changes beyond just the flat out damage nerfs and sustainability buff, such as the change to his hyperspheres, which are now just essentially a rapid fire mechanic, but also the second rock he can shoot if he successfully lands the first one, and the crowd control immunity during his kinetic grasp. The rapid fire hyperspheres was definitely an interesting change of pace for his primary fire, which if I'm being honest was fun to play around with, but I don't think is nearly as good 
good as his original just double fire mechanic. It feels like there's less strategy to trying to like time and precisely aim the shots of your hyperspheres when you can just rapidly spam fire it constantly as opposed to having to shoot out two at a time and then having a little cool down before you can fire it out again. But I will say it was an interesting change and I think if nothing else has just made me even more appreciate his default primary fire. I'd never really thought much about what would happen if he had such a drastic change to his basic hypersphere attack, but it was fun getting to see it work in such a phenomenally different way by just making this little tweak to the ability. As for his accretion and kinetic grasp, the accretion I think was a bit overpowered because usually it just feels like it results in hitting a hero, knocking them down, and then just immediately hitting them again with another rock, which considering the lesser damage maybe isn't quite that devastating, but being on the receiving end of that just doesn't really feel great because you're basically just guaranteed to get double stunned unless another hero steps in to protect you with like a barrier or something. An interesting little mechanic, a nice little reward aspect, I guess you could call it, by successfully landing your first rock, but overall probably not the best direction to take him. Kinetic Grasp, however, might actually have a bit of potential. Being able to resist crowd control while using the ability makes him feel so much better and more sustainable and just capable of enduring things. And while adding this aspect to the ability would likely require some additional tuning and tweaking if they ever wanted it to actually go to the live version of the game, I will say that out of everything that happened with Sigma, that's probably the one thing in particular which I would like to see actually come to his default kit. Maybe it would result in him being a bit overpowered, maybe it wouldn't really fit what Blizzard's going for with the character, but I definitely like that aspect of it, so as a tank player, I wouldn't mind seeing the crowd control resist with Kinetic Grasp becoming an actual thing. Moving on to the damage roll though, this unfortunately is going to be the roll which I have the least amount to say about, simply because, I don't know, there just weren't that many interesting damage hero changes in my opinion. Personally, the damage roll is my least played roll, so just flat out I have the least amount of experience to compare these changes to, but overall just looking at the patch notes themselves and the different changes and abilities that happened with them, very few of them stick out as being interesting in any capacity. There's a few exceptions, like the May Ice Wall being able to launch you up into the air, that's just a fun thing to get to play around with, and the Bastion change where he loses his sentry mode but just has this constant everlasting rapid fire of his primary weapon where he only has to reload once every like minute. Those are interesting changes and they're fun to play around with, but ultimately eh, I don't think they're anything really serious to write home about in terms of being, you know, actual possible changes they could push to the heroes on live servers, but by and large, the damage heroes in this patch just felt uninteresting in terms of the changes they got. But moving on to the support heroes, this is where things get interesting again. For the most part, the support category didn't feel like it got too many interesting changes, certainly more than the damage category did, but the two main heroes which I think are worth highlighting from the support category are, of course, Mercy, who got her Mass Res ultimate back, and Symmetra, who was moved from the damage category back into the support category. Starting with Mercy, getting to play her with the Res Ultimate again was a interesting throwback that definitely brought back a handful of memories from the early days of Overwatch, but for the most part actually surprised me with how not different it ended up feeling. Again, Mercy is a hero that normally I don't play very often at all, so I don't have much experience to compare to in terms of how she feels in this latest version versus how she normally feels, but just observing other people playing her and what little experience I do have have with playing the hero in general, she just really didn't seem that different, even with such a fundamental change by swapping her Valkyrie and Resurrect. Unfortunately, I think making Valkyrie an activated ability didn't work out very well in that it just felt very underwhelming in how low impact and short lasting it is. It just feels like something you quickly activate when you need a bit of a boost or if you need to be able to fly somewhere on your own, and otherwise just feels unimpactful and very uninteresting. The rest Resurrect Ultimate was a bit more successful, I'd say. There were a couple instances where I saw people actually manage to pull off a huge res where they resurrected like four more teammates. Personally, I never managed to get that to happen because I'm not a good Mercy player, but it was fun just having this old mechanic reintroduced to her kit. And while I won't go so far as to say that there's any real potential here for her maybe getting her Resurrect Ultimate back at some point in the future, it was just a nice change of pace and throwback to have this ability moved to being her ultimate again.
But moving on to Symmetra, I think she is easily the most interesting hero we had changed in this experimental card, which, you know, makes sense given that she moved from the damage to the support role. The idea of making her turrets heal instead of deal damage I think is a really interesting direction to take her as a healing support hero, but while I like the idea of it, I feel like it doesn't actually work that well. Unfortunately, once again, I'm in the position where Symmetra is one of my least played heroes normally, so I don't have the best comparison to compare her as a support to what she's like as a damage, but in playing her as a support, I often found it to be very frustrating to try to heal people when my only way of doing that was with the turrets. It felt like I either had to constantly be relocating them to keep up with where my teammates who are in need of healing are actually located, or otherwise I just have to set up a sort of healing nest that I just have to keep telling people, oh go back to the nest if you need healing, which isn't really a great way of healing teammates I feel like. However, that being said, I did feel like there was almost a bit of potential with this support healing Symmetra concept. To me, it felt like a clunky first iteration of what might eventually end up being a viable rework for the hero, but of course it had a ton of problems in this current form. For one thing, the AI of the turrets didn't seem to be particularly intelligent, given that they would latch onto a teammate, heal them, and then once the teammate was at full health, they would just keep trying to heal them without moving on to somebody else who's standing right there and is desperately in need of healing. So obviously the AI would need a bit of tweaking and adjustments to better target who's in need of healing if they did end up making a change for the hero like this, but beyond that, relying solely on her turrets as her only form of healing just doesn't feel good. Too many times it felt like there was someone specifically, usually a tank hero, that I wanted to heal, but they were just not in a location where any of my turrets were, so I was basically powerless. The easiest solution to this, which stuck out to me, was to make her primary fire beam a healing beam, just like what they did with her turrets. This would allow her to heal on the fly and then use her turrets as a sort of additional source of healing to better heal up targets in need without being entirely reliant on them. In fact, making her primary fire beam a healing beam felt so intuitive that I'm not sure why they didn't make that the case. Like, I get maybe there was a technical reason on the back end why they couldn't make that work, or just in terms of quick balance and the time they had to work on this, maybe it just wasn't feasible. But honestly, I think if they just tweaked the AI of the turrets, rebalanced some of her other mechanics, and then made her primary fire a healing beam, there's actually, I think, some potential room there for Symmetra to be a healing support hero. That's not to say I necessarily think they should rework her into being a support. I mean, given that she's already been a damage hero for years at this point, I'm sure it'd be better to just make a brand new support hero than to try to rework an existing damage hero into being a support, but I did think it was interesting how the seeds of a potential support rework for her felt like they were there. It seemed like if Blizzard really wanted to, there's actually probably a viable route they could take her in order to make her actually work as a support. Overall though, before I wrap up this video, I think the other thing I need to talk about when it comes to this latest experimental card, and to be honest, how Blizzard has been handling these creator experimental cards in general, is the fact that they feel very rushed in terms of the technical aspects in that so far both of the creator experimental cards we've gotten have been up for less than a day before needing to be taken down in order to fix some of the game-breaking bugs they contained. The first time this happened, the card was only down for a few hours, but this time they had to take the card down for almost an entire day to fix whatever issues were in there before they could put it back up for us to play it again. And while I'll be honest, I understand why these cards in particular are likely are more buggy and less balanced than the others, because let's be honest, these sorts of fun experimental cards like this that are just done by content creators in the community probably aren't the highest priority for the Overwatch dev team right now. Considering everything they're working on behind the scenes for Overwatch 2 and whatever else might be happening this year, I can understand that they wouldn't be able to put as much time and effort into fine tuning and bug fixing and balance testing these changes as they would for an official experimental card that was done entirely by the devs themselves. So to that extent, I understand why these patches are always as buggy and messy as they are, but unfortunately, I just feel like it doesn't paint a very good picture for the Overwatch dev team for them to consistently be putting out cards like this that result in a bunch of technical issues and then just have to get taken down right away. Even if there is an understandable reason for why this is the case, I think just from an optics and marketing perspective, most people see the Overwatch devs have issues like this and just assume 
assume it's representative of everything they're doing. Given that we've been getting very minuscule content aside from these experimental cards lately, it honestly doesn't look very good when the few things we do get are this buggy and broken. While I certainly appreciate the fact that Blizzard is doing this at all, as it's an interesting way to sort of get content creators involved with making content for the community, and also allows us to test out some of these crazier, wackier, and admittedly more controversial changes to the various heroes, I do worry a bit about how this is overall impacting people's perception of the Overwatch developers. Again, I understand they have much higher priorities at the moment than some dinky little temporary experimental card, but it honestly just doesn't look great for them, and the sentiment I see from the community for the most part when it comes to these sorts of things is that it's overall probably only hurting people's perception of Overwatch and the Blizzard developers. Those are my thoughts on it though, let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Was there anything in particular that stuck out to you from this latest experimental card? Or maybe you just found the whole thing to be boring, unfun, and totally lackluster. Either way, I'd love to hear from you, and be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, hit up that bell icon, and come join my Discord server to hang out and never miss any of my future Overwatch content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible, and if you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Otherwise, this is Master EN Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.